So one question I get asked a lot is how much coding do I need to know in order to become a cloud engineer? And the answer is none. Wait, that can't be right. Oh, there's more. The answer is none, but it could hurt your career if you don't know any. Let's go. Now it goes without saying that if you want to go to a cloud computing field that involves programming such as software development or DevOps or machine learning, you are at a huge disadvantage for those careers if you don't know any programming because obviously that's just all that these people do. So in this video, I just really want to talk about the administrators, the cloud administrators and how much you need to know and what you need to do to grow your career with the cloud. It's easy to say that you don't need any programming to become a cloud engineer. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that cloud computing is a growing field and as such, your career has to grow with it. So if you don't know any programming, you will have a hard time in a field that is growing and scaling extremely rapidly. So how much do you really need to know? Well, the answer is you don't need to be an expert, but you should be familiar with some of the basic operations. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that cloud computing is all about scaling the ability to create more and more resources and even create those dynamically as needed. So what that entails by definition is some programming because you can't have a person monitoring all the resources 24 seven to scale them. You have to have some automation in the background to automate that scaling and all that. Now, of course, a lot of that can be done through a graphical user interface. When you deploy your resource, you can say like virtual machine scale set that I want to up to that many and you can scale down and up based on those rules. But the thing you cannot do at least now is scale an entire infrastructure. You can't just click your way through deploying and scaling an entire infrastructure. Now, of course, yes, you can. If you are very persistent and have a very strong index finger to click on your mouse, but in reality, you would not do that. So as the demand grows for cloud computing, especially in an enterprise environment, your need to deploy bigger and bigger infrastructures all at once increases. So instructions on how to deploy infrastructure through pictures and documentation and clicking through things is going to die faster and faster as your company scales. Those companies who are growing in the cloud are moving towards infrastructure as code. And as the name <laughs> indicates, you have to know some programming or coding to be able to function in that environment. So yeah, right now you may be able to click your way through uh, deploying infrastructure and configuring infrastructure, but you have to see that the more a company adopts the cloud, the higher the probability of mistakes being made. And those mistakes have a very high chance of happening through manual processes. So for example, you put a virtual machine in your infrastructure and you accidentally forget to remove the public IP address. And now your whole company is open to the internet. And that is something that could have been avoided with a better, more automated, more regulated process, such as infrastructure as code. Another case for infrastructure as code is deploying a lot of resources at once. So for example, right now at work, we are deploying what's called an enterprise scale data landing zone, which is part of the enterprise scale framework uh, outlined by Microsoft. And that involves deploying and configuring a lot of resources. And if we had to do this process, manually, there is a guarantee that not only would nobody have the same thing configured the same way, but there's the guarantee that it would take days or months 
to click through the deployment of all the infrastructure, the deployment of all the accounts and, and private endpoints and all that. And through infrastructure as code, we can just say clone this. Here's the input variables that you have to use and then deploy it. So now the deployment of hundreds of configurations and resources takes minutes as opposed to days or months to deploy. So what do you truly need to know as a cloud administrator? So at first you don't need to know a lot about programming or infrastructure as code because a lot of the entry level slash junior jobs can be done through the graphical user interface. If you want to deploy just one virtual machine, you can do that through the graphical user interface. You can scale it and all that stuff. Now the problem is as your company grows in this cloud environment, the need to automate and scale resources is becoming increasingly important. So there are fewer things that you can do with the graphical user interface. And so if you don't develop the core programming skills that you need for infrastructure as code, you will be left behind. Now, what do I recommend you learn? What I recommend you learn is definitely Terraform. So Terraform allows you to deploy infrastructure by just describing it in what's called the HashiCorp configuration language, HCL. So if you see HCL, that's what this stands for. And it's not really programming per se. It's not natural language, but it's not programming either. So the way it looks like is a JSON file. It literally just describes your infrastructure. So you say, I want a virtual machine and I want a public IP address and I want it joined to this network and I want this size machine and I want this much hard drive and I want this much GPU. You just literally describe it. So it's not a difficult language to learn but it is a language that you have to learn through experience because there's just so many configurations and so many things that you can do with it that you just have to work with it. And my recommendation for administrators and people beginning in the cloud is get into the habit of doing your work through Terraform. Try to get all your infrastructure deployed through Terraform. It will help you because you will then work on very simple cases and you can build up from there. You will get that experience and you will build up from your experience. It's quite simple to get started. There's a lot of resources out there. I will put the link to some of them in the description. Now, the other thing I would recommend is some sort of scripting language. Uh, my Personal favorite is PowerShell, but of course you can use any other ones. What I would recommend you use if you don't want to use PowerShell is the CLI command line interface for each of the cloud providers. So Azure CLI, AWS CLI, Google Cloud uh, CLI, because this is how you're going to act upon your cloud and configure and deploy and remove resources. And so it's very important. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that actual programming, actual software development programming, if you want to go into only administration is not needed. You don't need Python. You don't need JavaScript. You don't need any of these languages because administration doesn't require them, right? It's only the people who build application on top of the cloud who need that knowledge. That being said, if you want to start learning a full-blown programming language for software development, I have a list right here of cloud programming languages that you should learn for cloud computing, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.